was American Idol season one your absolute shit too or okay so I wasn't allowed to watch TV during the week when I was growing up that was like our rule and only exception my mom made for me was American Idol on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and so I was like an American Idol addict and yeah 100% season one Hey, it's Brendan Gennetti. And I'm Devin O'Haran. And you are listening to Music You're Missing. And we are bringing you Emlyn. But before that, we just want to say thank you so much for all of the love. We released our first episode under Big Night Media. And one, it looks freaking cool as hell. So thank you to all of the people on the production team. Peter Hurley. Um, Josh, question mark. He goes by like Happy Face Boy <laughs> on social media. So I don't know his real name. I just met him. Josh, shout out. Uh, it looked amazing. And we're so stoked to be a part of Big Night Media. Yeah, um, don't forget about Aiden, our guest on the show. Oh, of course. Aiden Bissett, such a such a gem. A young boy. Wish I had hair like that at 18. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's when I started balding. Um, so today, like Devin said, we are joined by Emlyn, who is on the verge of doing something freaking amazing in about four hours. And what is that, Devin? She's dropping her debut EP. What is it called? Confessions of a Drama Queen. Confessions of a Drama Queen, I'm, which was led by the single Bomb, also known as a Back on My Bullshit, which blew the ever-living shit up on TikTok. We're talking like millions of views, hundred thousands of likes, clearly resonated with so many people. And it brought her music into such a larger audience, which is awesome because now she has her debut EP coming out. I'm so excited to hear it, and I can't believe we're literally talking to her four hours before one of the most important things she's ever done in her music career. I know, like so. I'm excited. I'm like honored to even be able to do that because, she, like, she's been in the game for a while. She has written for a lot of other artists, uh, so like she's finally sharing her story, which is really cool. But before we do that, you listened to podcasts before, you know the deal, Devin. Where can you find us on Instagram? You can find us at Music You're Missing. <laughs> and you can find us on TikTok at Music You're Missing Podcast. Um, and that is because Devin fucked up. No, I didn't I'm kidding. I'm fuck kidding. Up. They I'm, just did, it was already taken, guys. I'm sorry. No, I me. literally say that every episode. It was already taken. Um, but yeah, that's our TikTok. And then of course, every single artist that we ever interview, literally ever, is featured on our Spotify playlist called Music You're Missing. We also handpick some other artists that we think you would like that kind of fly on the low low. So definitely check it out, Music You're Missing. Our girl Emlyn is on the cover. And Bomb is atop the playlist right now. But definitely check out the whole EP because I'm so excited to hear it. It yeah, sounds insane. We got an early listen. No, not flexing or anything. <laughs> but Don't worry about it. Enough chat about it. Let's hear from the source directly how they're feeling. Emlyn, how's it going? Doing great. How are you guys? Well, you know, we're Good. doing super Can't well. Super, super giggly right now, honestly. Oh, amazing. That's the best kind of... Hang. <laughs> uh, so, you know, first of all, we have to thank you for coming on in approximately a 40 hour notice. <laughs> I, I saw you on, on TikTok. Like I've been stalking your TikTok. And when you DM'd me, I was like, oh, I'm so down. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my gosh, gosh. Thank you so much. That's uh, now I'm cringed out. Brendan's that shit's the so annoying. star of the show because like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know how to TikTok. It stresses me out. I did like a few and I was like, I'm retired. I'm sorry. Like, I can't well, do it. So much more work than you think it is. Oh my gosh. Like four little clips and people don't realize how much time you put into them. I'm like, I take up hours of my day. <laughs> Literally. If I spent as much time making them as I did watching them, I we would be viral. Like <laughs> it would be it's just insane. They take so long. They do. And you know what's funny is I think we obviously we were kind of stalking your TikTok. Um and I feel like you kind of had a similar like you started out just like posting covers and then it's turned into so much more we started out by being like i like this song and now i'm like i'm weaning off my antidepressants and it really fucked me up here's what you should listen to <laughs> casual <laughs> it's all really well to people with like that implement multi like dynamic personality traits like if you're not just talking about music I feel like it likes when you're like do you like pain and depression well here's a song about like like and they're like oh yeah because i think it's how people engage and they relate to it so for sure it's also kind of cool because i feel like you know I, we've been in me well at least i've been in media for a while and you've always kind of been pigeonholed into one thing so like it was always music media but now i can like really let it all out there totally and same I'm with so artists yeah yeah 100 percent. i i've like the advice that i've gotten from my friends that have like nice TikTok followings have been 
don't don't only do music yeah. like show you like so I cover like I covered from like body positivity content to like my music to like just my sense of humor. I try to like touch all the all the things, you know. Aww. I like the variety, honestly, because listening like having one specific thing can get boring and you can only do so much with it. So why not? Yeah. Explore other options. I don't know. Fuck yeah. Um. <laughs> so, Emlyn, uh, we, of course, want to talk about your debut EP, which is coming out tomorrow. Although when whoever is listening to this listens to it, it'll already be out. So go check yeah. it out right now. Um, but first, we have a little game that we like to play. It is called Deep Dive Hot Seat. And yeah. basically what that means is Devin and I creeped the shit out of you. I'm talking like super far back. And honestly, that you were a tough one. I will say you were a tough one. There wasn't anything too hardcore, like crazy that we found. Um, but basically we found all this, this info on you and we just have some fun questions to ask. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> all right, Devin, do you have it in front of you? All right, yes, take it away. I'm going to look up this time. So it doesn't look like I'm closing my <laughs> I'm eyes. So <laughs> Uh, the very first concert you've been to was Hillary and Haley Duff concert. If you yes. could hop on any one of Hillary Duff's songs, what would it be? Oh, oh my God. That's actually such a great question. <laughs> you know what? The other night I just watched, um, another Cinderella story, the one with Chad Michael Murray. And I totally forgot about the song any, anywhere, but here it's like, flying through the door, flying across the floor. I think I picked that one. I've been jamming to that in the car since I forgot about it. Oh. I love that answer, and that was my favorite movie. Like my oh. entire, I think that might be my favorite movie ever. Oh my gosh! Honestly, I don't. Chad Michael Murray. Oh, <laughs> the things! I can't that man. But yes, that's honestly one of my favorite. That was movies. a big age stuff uh, deep cut. I honestly like. I was thinking what I thought you would have said, and I was thinking of Fly. I feel like you would have really cool vocals on that. Another one that came to mind was So Yesterday. I feel like that's a pretty... That was what I was going to guess, actually. Bring that back, honestly. Make that a trending TikTok sound. It should. I know, like, all the deep cuts of every Hilary Duff album, though. Like, I could tell you, like, all the tracks, like, on, like, early, early albums. That's why that's... I got tons of deep cuts for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, all right. Next question is... Uh... You are a songwriter, having written for the likes of Grace and Chance, Haley Knox, and of course, many more. What is one song that you didn't write, but wish you did? Oh, um, that's not where I thought you were going with that. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have a lot, but the one that comes to mind is Lucky by Britney Spears. <laughs> I think it's immaculate in, in terms of pop music. Like mm. just the melodies are, are crazy. The fact that there's like a key change modulation, I wish that we could bring those back. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try and bring them back. And then um, like just the, the, the whole Max Martin style of layering different sections mm -hmm. in the last chorus like taking the pre and then the post and the background vocals and then you just get all the sections that you've linked onto throughout the song at the very end of it i think probably that one but that's more like of a melodic answer yeah and then lyrically this is really random <laughs> believe it or not but there's a song on the jason raz album called um we sing we sing we dance we steal things called um a beautiful mess and I think those are my favorite lyrics I've ever heard. You said on TikTok that you've been to more AJR concerts than any other artists. What kept you coming back and will you be taking any inspiration from them with your live sets? Oh, absolutely. I love AJR. First of all, we share the same manager, but I was a fan of them way before that happened. And I drove from Nashville to Cincinnati to go to one of their concerts at one point. Like, wow. Um, die hard AJ fan fans. behavior right there for sure a hundred percent yeah I mean they have just like a really um like incomparable theatrical presence in the way that they piece together their live shows I mean I think I really can't think of anybody that does it like them and they think so outside of the box with their with their songs and how to bring bring the songs to life in mm -hmm. a way that you didn't think about initially I, I mean I would yeah I would strive to to bring I just can't stop thinking about this one part. This one part of their show where they have like um, Jack is walking and the background is moving and it makes it look like he's walking in place, but it makes it look like he's walking on a on a street 
like down New York city, a New York city street. And like just little things like that, like outside of the box that paint a picture and make you feel like you're look, looking at a picture book. Mm-hmm. I is so cool. So yeah, I mean, I would love to do stuff like that. They are super cool. And I think the the amazing thing about them, like in terms of their live production is like, like you said, their melodies and just actual songs are so theatric that it really makes me want to see like a visual of it. Like, especially with the amount of like layers that they have. I I think I've seen that they've come to some of our shows before. Yes. Oh, so me and Brendan, we met when we both worked at iHeartRadio. And cool. so they did one of our, this, this is actually a funny story. They did one of our, um, like local shows called kiss concert. I remember they were dry. I was wrangling them at the time and they were driving in and like they were driving themselves in a minivan or something and their car broke down on the way to the show. And Gosh. I think it was them. I'm did we have to sure. get them with a golf cart? No, like they ended up, <laughs> they ended up like AAA came or something, but I think they were, were are they from like New Jersey or something uh, like that? They're from New York. New, New York. York. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just remember them driving in and they were just the nicest people ever. And it was just like yeah. so humbling that they like just wrote, like just drove themselves into the back of the Xfinity Center and they're like, <laughs> we're here unloading their own equipment. And like, it warmed my heart. Yeah. They, and there are those artists that have been doing it from the beginning to now, like from scratch themselves and like really build themselves I, I think they're so amazing and exactly like you said their theatrics and even their music I'm I'm all for over the top like crazy theatrical borderline satirical kind of <laughs> so on the same page so being a fan and now sharing a manager with them how is that very surreal yes I mean Yeah. And also just like being in the music industry, as a result, I have a lot of mutual friends with them too. And since they came from New York and I went to college in New York, it's just, it's strange in general. I think just like having um, musicians that you look up to sort of being not that far out of your circle of people. It's just like, yeah, I'm still a a fangirl at heart. (laughs) I was the girl with like fan accounts of my favorite artists. So like, (laughs) adjusting to like artist world i mean i think it, it allows me to like super relate when fans yeah. like and stuff too because i'm like i went so hard for the people that i love so i i get it but it's just crazy in general having people in your sort of circle and being the artist it's just crazy wait that's so cool and I'll, okay so i'm taking us away from the game kind of but it is also a deep dive so i was listening to an interview with you um and you had said that uh, kind of, there are some artists you really don't want to meet because it almost humanizes them too much. And I was wondering, like, I mean, now you're clearly grown in this industry and now, I mean, you're, you're making friends with some of your favorite artists. What's that like navigating that? Like, has that world been (laughs) destroyed for you or is it a, a different, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, like different than you thought. Yeah, it's, it's different in some ways. Like there are still people that I just, I, I really don't want to meet because I feel like too many videos. Um, but in general, I've not really been all that like terribly disappointed by anybody I've yeah. met. What I usually realize is just like how human we all are. Like it's so easy to kind of like over like romanticize the people that you look up to. And like when you have a one-on-one conversation more often than not, they're just as insecure as you are. They're just as like, trying to figure it all out as you are. And it's, it's humbling, like in a way, um, not even just to myself, but just sort of like, it just brings you to reality of like, yeah, everybody's just a person. Um, but initially approaching somebody that you're excited about, you're like, (laughs) 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 what do do I say? No, I feel that even as you were like giving a new like adjective to describe them, I, I was getting a different artist that that I've worked with and I've felt like that human side from them. Just you saying like uh, human, I I know that Kelly Clarkson's a, a big idol for you and she literally was like the nicest person I've ever seen. And it, this was not even like a working directly with her moment. This was like me on the sidelines just watching her interact and she literally exceeded all of my expectations of a normal human being, never mind like a super celebrity. My really good friend does interviews as well and said the exact same yeah. thing. Like I've never heard a bad thing about her. Thank God. <laughs> Cause I'd be yeah. so nervous. Imagine how traumatizing that would be. No, because I mean, we were like, grew- Kelly Clarkson isn't great. No, and I was couldn't. Like, that queen. And we grew up with it. I mean, you're the same age as us. Did you like, was American Idol season one, your absolute shit too, or? <laughs> I was 
okay, so I wasn't allowed to watch TV during the week when I was growing up. That was like oh. our rule. And I, the only exception my mom made for me was American Idol on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And so I was like an American Idol addict and yeah, 100% season one and every other season after that, it was my one thing that I looked forward to. That is uh, so, that's so cool. funny. That honestly, ex- dude, th- does that not explain everything? I Every time someone asks like, why do you work in music? I'm like, I don't know, but it's probably because of American Idol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's such a good show. Okay. <laughs> who is your favorite American Idol contestant? Who won? I went so hard for David Archuleta. Again. <gasps> Crush. Oh, my <laughs> whole heart. I literally cried when he did not. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. Like, truly. Like, yeah. I don't think I've experienced such reality television shock since that day. No. I just can't get over it. I still don't understand it at all. It's what? so funny you said that because I literally was scrolling on TikTok today and it was like, came up and it was a TikTok a TikTok of him and he was like, oh, it's the blah, blah, blah anniversary of when I came in second on American Idol and it's like a clip and like all the girls crying. And I was just crying, I think laughing. That, was it him reacting and being like, I'll never forget this day? <laughs> yeah. I hope these girls are okay right now, I think is what I'm Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. One might argue that was our all shared, <laughs> our first shared trauma. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> next question. You're, you said you were a huge fan of Soul Cycle. Um, first of all, love a good spin class. I'm always the most unathletic person in the, oh shit. Yeah. Is that a Peloton? Are you flexing on us right now? It's a soul cycle bike. <laughs> oh, even classier. Okay. <laughs> My question is what tracks are on your spin playlist? Um, that's a great question. I like to mix everything, like truly every single genre. I will go from Casey Musgraves to like pop smoke. Yep. <laughs> in like the span of a playlist. So like a couple tracks I've been really into brutal by olivia rodrigo um love it it's so my style too with the grunge mm-hmm. element the pop elements <laughs> um i love uh this new artist called ray i i mean how you pronounce it it's a song called dictator really sick um audrey nuna i like anything that has kind of like a well first of all soul cycle you do pedal to the rhythm of the music mm-hmm. so it has super music centric and i just like anything that makes you feel like a badass you know hell yeah (laughs) wait that actually brings up another question could you can you like play whatever song and like will it give you a like workout based off the beats per minute on that song or is it like all built in no but you just came up with a great idea (laughs) yeah that is i will have to like copyright that so my best friend was an instructor though. And she did, there is a way that you're supposed to piece together the playlist. So you'd have to do like the first song would have to be blank BPM or not exactly, but more or less like a jog versus like a run or whatever. And you can kind of, um, I kind of got a feel for the way that the playlist works. So I do make my own playlist and then I'll just free ride and kind of do it. And that's oh, that's it. awesome. My, I would definitely play with that. Mine would be like old school, like Panic at the Disco, and like <laughs> yours would be all. It would be over so the, creepy. Mine, I think mine would be all over the place. I don't even know what yours. Would the be. Undertaker's theme song. Um, all right, <laughs> we're gonna wrap up this game. Yeah. Last question. Uh, your track "Bomb," uh, also known as "Back of My Bullshit," it blew the shit up on TikTok, and they many of these the newfound listeners put them in some funny ass playlist names. Yeah, you gotta pick. Sure one favorite playlist that it's been playlisted on what is it there's one um that made me laugh so hard that was like songs to commit arson and murder to <laughs> i do but it true i it fits perfectly i feel like yeah no accurate first of all i i posted like a response playlist thing on tiktok and i i didn't want to like get in trouble with the fbi but i was like <laughs> wink and i was like yeah no no like no. same like I literally have no plans on committing arson, but for some reason I like couldn't follow that. I'd be scared just in case like I did. Like, it could like get backtracked to you. Like you listen to that once, like you're a suspect. And someone finds out. It's like, well, look at this playlist they listen to. <laughs> well, you know what? That's so cool that y- you are able to see how all these people are resonating with your song and like the exact way that they listen to it, which I think is cool. Um, but we need to talk about the debut EP, Confessions of a Drama Queen. 
Yes. Congratulations. I, so like we said, it's, it's coming out tomorrow, technically. Uh, when people listen to this, it'll already be out. How are you feeling? It, you're hours away from it dropping. Oh, I feel amazing. I've had like some people that discovered me through TikTok that are actually based in Europe and it's already out over there. So I've been getting like tweets and stuff, just reactions. And it's been making my absolute day. Seriously, I've been in the best mood ever. And I just can't believe it. I mean, it's been like a year and a half in the making a little bit more. And it's everything that I did in the last year while, while in quarantine and all the things I've wanted to say. And I like really, really pushed myself as a writer, as an artist to like be honest in a way that I haven't ever before and confess things, <laughs> confessions of drama, <laughs> that I would be probably afraid to in real life and just talking to people. So like, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's insane to have your art finally into the like into the world in people's hands and not just like in your own phone while you're blasting driving down the PC. <laughs> that is a great point about uh finally being able to like share your story because like we said you've been writing music for other people yeah. and now being in control of like you like you're now an extension of yourself is out there for strangers to consume what goes through your mind when you're curating like the it was eight tracks like what goes through your mind when you're curating like the perfect eight tracks for this yeah. So it's so crazy. It's eight tracks. Cause I felt like seven was long and then bomb, <laughs> bomb coming out was like an accident. Cause I, I know like I genuinely wasn't going to put it on my EP. And when I leaked it, I was like, what do you guys think? And then I was like, well, I guess I got to put it out now. No choice. Yeah. <laughs> no choice. No choice. Um, but no, for me, it was really important, um, that I kind of let the world know that I'm not only a singles artist. Like I'm the type of person that makes a whole body of work, um, which is why there's an intro and an outro to the project. And I wanted people to feel like the cohesion and not just my sound, but like the story that I was telling. And even though it's not like exactly chronologically what's happened in my life, I do feel like you get kind of like from the intro being an actual like lyrical introduction to who I am all the way to the outro being sort of like, here are some lessons that I've learned mm -hmm. in my 24 years of life. Um, it was just really important to me that um, people were able to like digest it as a full body of work in, in addition to like just jamming out to the singles, you know? And today you put all the description up <laughs> and today you put all the descriptions up on Instagram how have people been reacting? Because they haven't even heard the songs yet. And I feel like you're already getting crazy reactions. Yeah, it's been crazy. Like I've been getting tweets from um, people that are like, oh, there's a song, like a song that's track five, which I follow in Taylor Swift's footsteps. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Live for her. I like to make that my track five, the one that like really pulls on the heartstrings and, and says something emotionally different than the other tracks. I've had a lot of reactions to just the song title for track five, which is empathy will be the death of me. And that that's been really crazy. Just like seeing people being like, Oh my gosh, this one's going to kill me. And I'm like, yeah, probably. Is it me. <laughs> um, so just like even people latching onto either song titles or just little descriptions of how they came to be, um, has been amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, forgive me for like the clusterfuck of what I'm trying to say right now, but something that I love about this album and I was trying to think about like how, or EP rather, um, how, how I wanted to like word this <laughs> is, I don't know. It's just like so theatric, but serious at the same time, if that makes sense, like e confessions of a drama queen, it's like satirical, but it's also not, I don't know. Like it's like a perfect blend of it's like the perfect introduction for you to like showcase your personality, your songwriting skills, your musical abilities. Uh, and I just think it's, I don't know, it's like a really solid work. Thank you so much for saying that. And also like, what a cool observation. Cause I feel like that's really true. And there was a period of time where the EP was actually going to be called something entirely different. I didn't, um, I didn't love the idea initially of it being called confessions of a drama queen, because I felt like it made it seem like I was sort of making some of my confessions seem a little less serious. And you're right. Like there's a lot of serious content in it, mm -hmm. but I also think that you hit it right on the head, which is that like there are elements of it that are really serious and also elements that are silly and satirical and over the top and like probably things I wouldn't actually say in real life. And so I do think I love the title now because I really see it as like, it is a combination of like confessions of a drama queen, which is me. Like I can be really serious and I can be really silly and over the top as well. So that that's a really cool observation. Thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, and such is life too. I feel like, especially while we were talking about like TikTok, you can showcase multiple sides of your personality. Well, like you, you can and should do that in your music. You're not yeah. just one sound, you're many sounds. And like you said, you're an a EP album artist, not just a, a singles artist. Yeah, totally. And I also like grew up in Nashville, like writing songs on piano and guitar and stuff. So there's an element of me that's like really like a songwriter of like top to bottom songs that like, of course, I have this quirky out of the ordinary over the top attitude because that's who I've grown into. But like my roots and like where I started were like true top to bottom songwriting. And I feel like I wanted to cover all the bases of like I write and I like I write right. And I also write silly stuff, too, and like f fun, jammy stuff. So, well, that's so cool. I'm so excited that it will eventually be out in the world <laughs> uh, that, it, you know, it's coming out and already people are responding well to it. But we have to ask, of course, once that's out, what what else can we expect? What's next? Oh my gosh. Well, I write all the time, like constantly. I constantly have ideas. Like I wrapped um, this project about a month or a month ago with all the masters and everything. And my producer was like, okay, great. Like, um, I'll see you later. And like, I literally hit him up a week later and was like, um, I actually have a lot more content. Work. <laughs> I also just like went through a breakup. So I have lots of like breakup song content coming. And like, I imagine I'm probably going to put music out I might be forced to hold for a little while I would keep spitting stuff out but um yeah so more music eventually I don't know when but at some point I would love to tour as soon as it's safe for the world to be um at concerts again I mean I know there's elements and parts of the country that are doing it and I'm just hoping that um the time comes that it's super safe and everyone can do it and have a freaking blast I'm mm -hmm. going to a festival this summer later in the summer so like i'm excited what festival <laughs> bonnaroo oh i want to go to bonnaroo so badly Same. well i've never been to a music festival so i'm just so all excited right. you're in fan. for a treat that's all i have to say honestly uh, oh. i also i can't wait till we edit this and we like edit i've never been to a music festival and then it's like this is how it started and this is how it's going and it's like you walking out and you're like what the fuck is up coachella you know like that i can't wait for that yeah you're oh, like oh i'm going yeah. to bonnaroo this year next year you'll be playing yeah it. so yeah I mean, that's that's the goal for sure but that i mean that's so that's like going to happen for sure that's so exciting is there so none of these tracks then have been played out yet right no, I've never played any of them live before. <laughs> so oh my goodness. which ones are you most excited to play? Oh, I mean, I have a special spot in my heart for a thousand parties. There's something about a song in six, eight that has just like electric guitar. I just feel like I'm going to lose my mind on that one. And then obviously bomb because like people know it. So I just can't wait to see people like even like scrolling on TikTok and seeing people like mouth the words to it. Like can't wait to see people sing it back and stuff. Um, those ones for sure. Man, that is so it's cool. It's going to be insane. For sure. And if you're ever in Boston, you already know we'll be from <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. I, I will be in Boston. I assure you. My mom well, actually went to school, high school in New Hampshire. So oh, I'm no way. It's close. The general area. And now my mom lives in Maine. So it'll be in the Northeast. Oh, somewhere. heck yeah. New England. We love yeah. that. That is true. All right. Well, we like to wrap up pretty much all of our, our shows with just this final question. Uh, what are motorcycle? Um, <laughs> what are some of your goals? And it doesn't have to be music related, but for sure it could be. It is called music you're missing after all um, for the year. My goals for the year. Um, probably to take a little bit of pressure off of myself. I think the last... Um, month or two especially given that it's like my debut ep i've just put pressure on myself for reasons that are not I, just because i want it to be perfect and i want mm -hmm. people to be it. um and i'm trying to get better about uh being a little easier on myself i feel like we all should be a little nicer to ourselves especially musicians um hardest critiques of their of their own self mm -hmm. so probably i'm looking forward to attempting less pressure on myself <laughs> Um, and also just continuing to see, um, post things on TikTok, post things on social media and have people engage and, and meet more people, friends slash fans and, um, and talk to people. And yeah, I mean, connecting is my, is the most important thing in the whole world, whether it's with friends, fans, people in the industry, just like having great conversations and feeling like, um, we're connecting and 
and I'm gaining or not even gaining something, but like but learning something or vice versa is like all I really care about this year. And especially since we've all been like inside the last year connecting. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely connecting time to get out. <laughs> yeah, getting the hell out of my home. Yeah. Well, that is so exciting and I'm so excited for you. And especially, oh, I can't wait for this to actually, I think I might stay up till, even though I've heard I the just, whole thing, I might stay up till 12.01. Well, I just can't believe that we're like talking to you and then this is, you're going to remember this night for the rest of your life and you're yeah. going to be like, oh, I did an interview before it. I know. I feel like we missing. need to, we need to like <laughs> pop bottles for you right now. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That just gave me chills. So I promise I will remember it forever. Okay. Oh, Good. my heart. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean it to give you chills or anything, but like, it's just such an exciting time. And I feel like the album or the EP is coming out at the perfect time. Like at the, country is coming out of lockdown the whole country is back on their bullshit yeah the whole yes literally <laughs> and it just like this was your quarantine work and we're coming out of quarantine so it's time for other people to hear it fuck yeah thank you so much seriously you guys are so awesome oh my gosh no you are well thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> this like like Devin said i'm honestly like super stoked that we were able to snag you especially right before like this momentous uh point of your career so thank you very much for your time uh and we will of course be in contact with management about when the release is scheduled playlist cover etc yeah amazing Seriously, you guys are the best. <laughs> oh, you too. Well, hey, have an amazing night. I don't know how you're celebrating, but please. Please do something fun. Yeah. Especially tomorrow once everything's released. Yeah. Time. You say you're having I, friends over? Yeah, literally just in my apartment. We're just going to hang out and like eat buffalo chicken dip and like drink wine. Oh my <laughs> Obviously, gosh. that sounds like goals. So that is the perfect way to celebrate. Well, thank you guys. Seriously. Yeah, so of lovely. course. <laughs> so great like you guys really like think about them and i really appreciate that oh thank you okay first of all i love her second of all i can't believe we're literally just talked to her and she's releasing her debut ep i'm stressed for her not because i like i know it's going to do well but just because that's such a crazy time in her life and the fact that she was so calm and she was just like it's already getting great reviews. <laughs> I was like, well, no shit. Like it, such, it's so yeah, good. She was calm. <laughs> like I, I'm so impatient. We actually like just got some fun news too that happens in like a week and I'm so impatient. I could not imagine being four hours away from the, my debut, like cohesive work release. I would actually tear all of my skin to pieces. After working I mean, on it for like a year, you need to chill with that. <laughs> but after working a year on it, like, it's finally coming to an end. I'm just so happy for her. I know, and I feel like she so deserves cool. like she just seems like she deserves it and she put so much like heart into it. And she's just like so cool. Like you can tell her personality is exactly who she portrays it to be online and through her music. Uh, and she definitely has solidified two lifelong little fans over here. So we're very excited for what's next for Emlyn and of course for the EP to come out. Devin. Where can you find Emlyn on social media? You can find her at Emlyn Music. Yes, yeah, so definitely go check her out. And while you're following things, of course, you got to follow the Music You're Missing podcast. And you can find us on Instagram at Music You're Missing, on TikTok at Music You're Missing podcast, and on Spotify, our playlist is called Music You're Missing. All the artists featured on the show ever are on our other Spotify playlist called The Complete Collection by Music You're Missing. So that goes way back to when this was like a thing I did in my college apartment and like recorded it off my iPhone camera. So like it's a it's a cool collection if you're looking for some new tunes. Um, but other than that, shout out Emlyn and everyone involved in making this episode. Let's go get them and good luck. Bye. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.